And we are back with part two to this uh, reaction. Anyway, uh, let's continue. The eye to focus while moving quickly and changing direction underwater. Therefore, in this fight, the Mosasaur will be able to focus quickly on incoming objects and have a really good sense of where the shark is at all times, as long as it's in close proximity. Their binocular field of vision, however, is not as high as when the Meg is moving its head side to side, spanning at about 29 degrees, similar to modern-day monitor lizards. Mm. This is still enough for this scenario given their wide monocular vision. But what about their other senses, such as smell? It is known I mean, the they could, I mean, the Mosasaurus could smell the Meg. Um, maybe. Which relies on Jacobson its what now? To catch scent particles and scan them using this organ, sending this data to the brain for processing. The issue with InGen's version of the Mosasaur is that there is no forked tongue, suggesting the lack oh. of or a greatly diminished Jacobson's organ. So this, no however, snake tongue. Okay. A better sense of hearing. Since this InGen Mosasaur was a very vocal creature, it's only plausible for this animal to have a developed set of ears. On one hand, you have an oversized shark with capabilities of detecting the presence of another animal from miles away, making ambushing this animal practically impossible and slightly better than average shark vision. So, uh, the, other, the Meg wins this one, right? Able combatant in close range. Both abilities are important for this matchup, but because the Meg senses set it up better for an ambush against the Moza, hey, the Meg takes the let's go. Category. Number seven, intelligence. Okay, uh, this one's a bit tricky, but I'm a, I think the Mosasaurus is this one. There is much evidence to suggest that the real-life Meg may have been just as intelligent as the Meg seen in the film. This guy <clears throat> can display signs of complex thought processing, such as targeting the research station's glass and determining that this thing was indeed penetrable, figuring out how to properly attack awkward, unfamiliar objects such as this rollerball, and developing strategies to effectively kill many types of powerful life forms, such as this giant squid and kraken. In the latest installment, we witnessed this mech Hai Chi, who managed to recognize pulses associating them with commands. The real-life Megalodon, as well as modern-day sharks, are believed to have a fairly large brain-to-body ratio as well. Displaying okay, this one actually is now tri is tricky. It's a bit tricky. Because the Meg is pretty smart, and the Mosasaurus is also pretty smart. More evidence of this animal's problem high levels of discernment can be found in a rare fossil found in North Carolina, indicating that when targeting other carnivores, Megalodon was knowingly attacking the head of the opposing animal. In an attempt to... So, uh, the Meg goes for the head. But how does well, that's the thing uh, Thor couldn't do to Thanos. You're not funny. For determining intelligence, we find that the Mosasaur group, as far as monitor lizards go, were likely the smartest. The oh, okay. probably even smarter, as their brain cavities suggest that their brains were more bulbous and the cerebellum was larger than that of a non archosaur <clears throat> reptile. This implies cognitive abilities such as counting, distinguishing faces, social hunting, and advanced memory and learning capabilities. This is reflected by enough findings suggesting that these animals were able to figure out the anatomy of their prey pretty well. For instance, there are fossils of ammonites with cracked shells indicating that the Mosasaur would crack these to disrupt their buoyancy. And going as far as both adult and juvenile tooth marks on these suggesting that the parents would actually train the younglings on how to hunt. InGen's Moza was likely just as intelligent. With okay, so the Mosasaurus wins in intelligence. But most likely in well, maybe. Animals. An example is how this animal was suspiciously friendly to humpback whales, possibly even able to communicate with each other given that this animal does emit whale-like vocalizations throughout its appearances. Yeah, it did Furthermore, make whale-like noises. And even figuring out ways to hunt outside its typical habitat implied that it's a very figurative creature. Meaning that the longer the fight plays out, the better it will figure out the mag. As far as figuring things out on yeah. the spot, the edge will go to the Mosasaur. But before we move on to weaponry, there's another equally important factor to discuss. Number eight, experience. Okay, this one is tricky because the Mosasaurus and the Meg are probably equal in experience. 
Lands that each of these had to face but I feel like it'll go to the Meg. It is unknown how long these Megs have lived underwater, <coughs> but taking into account where they come from, they are not only familiar with what is down there, but also familiar with the effects of different depths. This Meg, unlike the real life Megalodon, had a few biological traits changed. These specimens had a much higher tolerance for cold, low visibility waters. Its familiarity with this environment would mean that if it took the fight to deeper water, it would most likely have an edge down here. Additionally, huh. this Meg was accustomed to fighting other large, hostile creatures that thrived in the depths of this trench. Unlike the Mosasaur, who really never faced another underwater sea monster of this category. Yeah, the, the Mosasaur has never really fought any other sea monster. After her escape, the so I think it'll go to the Meg. Well, we both male, think it'll go to the Meg. Going to be the type of animal to pose a huge threat to the Mosa. If we take a look at a speculative repertoire of the opponents these two probably had in the past, yeah, the it goes to the Meg. The edge when it comes to combat experience. <clears throat> it is now time to take a look at these animals. I apologize weapons. that I keep doing that. Number nine, fight Meg. Meg. The animal that takes this edge will prove that it has the strongest, most effective bite, as well as being equipped with the best arrangement of teeth. Because Meg has a stronger bite force. I mean, sharks are one of the, like are one of the one of the strongest predators in the ocean, and the Meg was pretty powerful. So, like, uh, yeah. <coughs> so much mucus in my throat. So yeah, Meg gets the edge and bite. That's right, this adaptation of the jaws allows the shark to lift their head and thrust their mouth forward to bite Oh! Prey. Some real-life shark's jaws are reinforced with calcium <coughs> deposits that give the surrounding cartilage more strength, allowing this shark to both inflict and soak up massive amounts of impact force. But what about the bite force? It is estimated for Megalodon's jaws to reach 25,000 PSI at the front of the jaw and a whopping 42,000 on average at the oh. back of the jaw, close to the muscle attachments. Note that if this shark does land a bite, most of the force will be inflicted by the front part of the jaw based on how these work. But the damage has just begun. After clamping its teeth, this shark would shake its head, thrashing at the victim, leveraging the sharp edges of these teeth to literally saw off a chunk of flesh. A so yeah, bite goes to Meg. Impossible after getting clamped on by these teeth. After all, this was the animal notorious for rushing whales down and biting their tails clean off. This scene here is <coughs> entirely plausible in real life, given the resistance of these teeth and the power of this bite. So, how does InGen's Mosasaur compare? Just uh. happens that the Jurassic World website back in 2015 listed the Mosasaur's bite force at 13,000 PSI. Well, that's not bad. That of a T-Rex. However, PSI is admittedly a somewhat shaky metric to use since it really relies on a specific amount of surface area of effect as much as it does on actual force. An animal with a specific amount of teeth would have a much higher PSI than an animal that has more teeth making contact on a certain object, distributing the same force on more pressure points. Therefore, it's possible that the bite force of this Mosasaur would have fluctuated as its teeth arrangements changed as well, or depending on the type of target it would bite on. Mosasaur teeth come in different varieties, but can be described I, as conical, I don't really know what to say. I'm just focused. I'm just focused on the video. Me too. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> these would be a whopping six to eight inches long. <clears throat> God, so much mucus in my throat. Maximum damage, these would first have to pierce and then rely on violent muscular movements for it to tear flesh. When we combine this type of bite damage with the momentum of the impact, we are dealing with a type of bite that could inflict deep piercing wounds if the Mosasaur manages to wrap its mouth around that body part. Okay. All these two types of bite methodologies are quite devastating, but only one of these will win the edge in this battle. Oh yeah, they also because both killed dinosaurs. The Meg killed a T-Rex, and uh, the Mosasaurus killed the Indominus Rex.
For this reason, and because it has a much more deadly bite, the Megalodon takes yep. a critical edge when it comes to bite effectiveness. Believe it or not, there is more <coughs> these two have to offer in terms of weaponry. God. Number 10, Auxiliary Damage. Um, I'm going with the Meg. Yep. Me too. Both of these creatures, as well as other marine animals, have been seen countless times to deploy another attack methodology, ramming. <laughs> right. Both of these animals are capable of or exercising it just mean? to maximum effect. But who does this better? To find out, we'll have to account for three important factors. Speed, acceleration, and surface area. Sharks are very well capable of ramming into prey, sometimes on purpose, but mostly to set themselves up for a follow-up bite. This can be done from the side or from below. As sharks age, their cartilage can also harden, approaching a density similar to that of bone, making this lightweight and strong material perfect for this sort of attack. Their nose, however, is pretty wide, meaning that any force, thanks to their superior swimming speed, will be mitigated because it will be spread along a wider surface area. Okay. This bank can accelerate faster than your average shark, however, so this guy will have a higher ramming force than a real-life megalodon. This was seen in how this meg effortlessly rams into reinforced objects such as hardened glass or steel. On the other hand, we have a slightly slower mosasaur, but one that can accelerate much faster and... Yeah, the mosasaurus, like Ingen's mosasaurus, can probably accelerate pretty good. But I think the meg wins an auxiliary weaponry. literally tons of force on a large stout opponent, increasing the probabilities of a perfect hit. How much force? Around 26,000 pounds per square inch, traveling at 16 miles per hour, assuming this Ooh, was a geez. perfect hit. Admittedly, most hits would reach levels lower than this, but really strong nonetheless. This would be enough to send pressure waves into the body, bypassing any armor or tissue, bruising the muscles underneath and rattling the internal anatomy. And on the off chance that this mosasaur hits the gills, then we have a serious wound. Uh -oh. Despite the shark's larger size and mass, the mosasaur will be able to ram it with much harder force with little effort. Not to mention that this thing could ram more frequently given that it is in fact more agile and can accelerate much faster. Compare the piercing power of a sledgehammer compared to that of a pickaxe moving at a slightly slower speed. The same so, uh, who here. wins? For auxiliary damage, the mosasaur oh, goes to the mosasaur. Ah, okay. Ready to unleash these monsters to the <clears throat> arena. But God, we'll I have so much mucus in my freaking throat. Into account. X Factors. Ooh. As discussed previously, both of these creatures differ greatly in how they process oxygen in their system. But perhaps the greatest difference of all is how frequently they acquire this element, or how they can die of the lack thereof. In the Meg's case, oxygen is acquired at all times as long as it's swimming forward. Any force that will prevent it from doing so for prolonged periods of time, or if it allows repeated damage to the gills, will cause this shark to drown. As this battle plays out, the Meg will run the risk of the Mosasaur finding this out. So, the quicker this battle ends, the better. The okay. Mosasaur does not have the ability to extract I, from the water I seriously, I don't even know what to say. Me neither. We're just so focused. We're just focused. Oh yeah, also I think real Megs will like attack from below. Ooh. Oh. Come on, Meg. You can do this. Come on, Meg. <laughs> with its slender, agile build and deadly weaponry wins the edge in being less vulnerable, greater stamina, agility, intelligence, and auxiliary damage. The watery arena is ready. Oh, come on, Meg, you can do this! Come on, Meg. Okay, just get to the fight already. Yeah, there's the Meg. Oh, sneaky.
sneaking up on the Mosasaurus. Come on, Meg. Oh, it's getting its teeth ready. Up oh, the Mosasaurus sees it. Oh, Mosasaurus with the dodge. Not bad. Come on, Meg, you can do this. Oh no! Come on, Meg. You can you can survive this. Come on. Come on, Meg! Meg! Oh, Mosasaurus with the ramp. Oh! Yes! Yes! Come on, but Fight the Moses fin off. Oh! What? Are they going into deeper water? Oh! Oh no! Oh, come on, Meg. Meg, come on, you can do this. Let's go, Meg! Oh. Oh, they're gonna ram each other. Yes! Yes, Meg! Yes! Yes! Yes, 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 come on! Yes! Yes! And the winner is the Meg. All right. In this confrontation between these two animals, the Meg ended up as the indisputable victor. So yes! Why did the shark win? Uh, cause it's a analysis, shark. We find that both corporal armor and bite effectiveness were the battle attributes that weighed heavily when it came to determining the results of this battle. Okay. Because the shark has the higher likelihood of detecting the Mosasaur first, this battle scenario began with the shark attempting to ambush the Mosasaur. Near miss. The Mosasaur, okay, Mosasaur dodged the Meg. After committing to the first charge, the Meg now continues swimming to wind up momentum for a second assault. But the Moza strikes first. Having a stout body and thick skin is always helpful, and the Moza lets go of the shark and resorts to ramming. The shark, aided by the impact, now turns enough to shred through the Moza's hind flipper. The Mosasaur has never felt anything like this before. Panicking, she swims away, but now picks up on a weakness. The Meg now initiates a tactical retreat, but the Mosasaur is not finished. Yeah, and the Mosasaur is like bites spot, the gills. The reaches for the gills, but the shark's increasing speed only limits the damage inflicted by the Moza. We are now in deep water, a dark place where the shark takes full advantage. Injured but not defeated, the Mosasaur now knows where this shark is, and both find themselves committed to a frontal attack. The hardened head of the Meg proves too hard to bite through. Panicked and tired, the Mosasaur swims rapidly away from the Meg to reach the surface. In doing so, it gives the shark enough time to wind up the last attack. There's no yeah, then the Meg wins. Yay! Taking form as a combination of a hellish amount of saw-like teeth and a heavy body carried forth by high speeds, this shark managed to land a blow to the side of the Moza. This provides little to no resistance to this sort of attack. The Meg manages to crunch through the bottom ribs into the soft belly, spilling everything out. The Moza met its end at the jaws of this Megalodon. But regardless of the outcome, there is no doubt that had these two swam our oceans, we'd be witnessing one of the most epic ocean battles in history. Okay. Special thanks to our team of researchers, animators, Is that is that the end of the video? Oh my god, finally, yes! If you want to <clears> see <throat> more of these fights and look at some Can't wait for scenes, some more monster face-off videos. Thanks for watching.
watching, and we'll see you in the next one. This was a long but awesome video. Okay, I'm gonna throw you now. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ah! Anyway, that was the Meg versus Ingen's Mosasaurus Battle Face Off Analysis by Goji Center. Anyway, Godzilla out.